Hi, I'm Kyle with Kimray, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about low pressure control valves. If you would like more training on this in person, please visit our training and demos page on our website. There you can find more information about how we can come out to your place or you can come to a Kimray store and receive training. The four products we're going to talk about today are the pneumatic single acting, the pneumatic double acting, the pneumatic adjustable double acting, and the electric low pressure control valve or the ELO. Each one of the pneumatic low pressure control valves might be named something slightly different depending on the technical document you're looking at. The uh, language I've always used is single, double, and adjustable double acting, um, but single acting could be called reverse, uh, double acting, uh, sometimes is known as direct, and then adjustable double acting is sometimes known as adjustable direct. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I always use the single, double, and adjustable double acting language. First one we're going to look at is the single acting low pressure control valve. You would use this in applications where you are wanting a uh, fail open valve or anytime there is a pneumatic signal to the valve, you want that valve to be in the closed position. The pneumatic signal goes to the top of the valve actuator and that pressure will hold the valve in the closed position. By low pressure, I'm meaning sub 300 pounds. Normally, you know, these first three products that we're gonna talk about are used in even lower pressures than that. So you have, you know, very minimal pressure, usually below 30 PSI going through these valves. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that the operating pressure or the pressure inside of the valve uh, cannot be more than double your supply pressure just because of the area of the actuator is twice that of the valve seat. So for example, let's say we have 10 pounds um, in the valve body, that means you need at least five pounds uh, of pneumatic pressure to hold that valve in the closed position. If you had 20 pounds uh, of pressure in the valve body going from upstream to downstream and only five pounds of pneumatic signal, uh, that valve would not seal properly. And so with the single acting, you just need to make sure that your supply pressure is sufficient enough to hold that valve in the closed position. Um, you know, that, that could be a, a possible cause for a leaking valve. If, if you have pressure leaking by a valve, you want to make sure that your pneumatic signal is strong enough to hold that in the closed position. It should operate really well for a long time as long as you don't have um, any acid gases like H2S or CO2. Um, those are things that can deteriorate the elastomers in the valve and cause premature failure. Uh, if you do have those types of acid gases, just make sure that you're using the appropriate elastomer that will stand up to those conditions. The single acting valve is called single acting because there is a single force put against this valve in comparison with the ones with the springs. So there is uh, one force on one side of the diaphragm with, that's the pneumatic signal that's pushing that uh, to a certain position. So that's why it's called a single acting valve. Next up, we have the double acting valve. Uh, so we have a pneumatic signal um, that comes underneath the diaphragm. And then we also have a spring on the opposite side of that diaphragm. So there's two forces. Uh, acting against one another. That's why we call it a double acting valve. You can also use this one in gas or liquid applications. So the pneumatic signal coming to this valve could be coming from uh, some kind of pilot, like a temperature controller, or it could even be coming from something like a liquid level controller or a liquid level switch. Uh, it just needs that pneumatic signal to actuate the valve. Um, how we have it set up uh, in this rendering here is uh, pressure opens the valve and then the valve spring makes it a fail closed valve. So without a pneumatic signal on this valve, 
uh, the spring would then force it closed. Uh, there are a few different spring options for these valves. So depending on your operating pressure, you want to make sure you have the appropriate spring uh, inside of this valve so that way it can close against that upstream pressure. Um, whether you're operating, you know, on relatively low pressure, like, uh, you know, below five or six pounds, um, all the way up to, you know, operating at 35 pounds. Uh, you want to make sure that you have the correct spring in there. The single acting is more or less fail open because if you remove that pneumatic signal, the upstream pressure is going to push the valve open. Um, so if you are wanting, um, you know, the failure position of the valve to be open or you're wanting the valve just to remain closed as long as it has a pneumatic signal, you want to go with the single acting valve. Uh, if you want there to be a failure position of closed, you definitely want to go with the double acting because it does have that spring in the actuator of the valve uh, that will force it to go closed if it does not have a pneumatic signal. You know, for example, the double acting could be used a lot of the times uh, in burner valve applications. So you have a, a T12 thermostat monitoring vessel temperature and when that gets below its set point, you need that vessel to heat back up. And so there's an output from that T12 um, to the burner valve, which in this case is a low pressure control valve. So that pneumatic signal opens up that burner valve, allowing fuel to go to the burner to increase the temperature. Um, the T12 itself is indirect acting in that application. Um, and then it's going to a, a double acting burner valve, uh, opening up, allowing that fuel to go by. So the reason you might need an adjustable double acting valve um, would be that you are wanting the valve to have a failure position of closed, um, but then you're wanting to not have to swap out springs. You wanna change uh, the spring tension or the spring range without having to take apart the valve. So as an adjustment screw on top, so you can increase or decrease the spring tension, which will hold against different upstream pressures. Uh, it also allows you to turn this valve um, into a um, more or less a spring loaded back pressure valve in some applications where you don't have to have a pneumatic signal going to the valve actuator, uh, the spring and the top is just acting against the upstream pressure pushing up on the seat. If you're wanting to repair uh, either the single acting, double acting, or adjustable double acting valves, uh, they are all really similar valves. Um, we have a repair video that covers all three of those. So if that's something that you're needing, we'll put a link uh, right on the screen. You click, click on that and watch that video. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about the electric low pressure control valve or the ELO. This is a one inch valve only, but it can be used again in either liquid or gas applications. Most commonly it's used uh, in BMS system or burner management systems to control the fuel going to a burner electronically. So that, that allows you to do a couple of things. It allows you to automate um, your system. If you're doing remote startups or shutdowns, that's definitely a capability of this. Um, you can remote monitor this valve, um, but it, it has the same capabilities as its pneumatic counterparts. It just does it electrically. Uh, so it has a small uh, electric actuator on top, um, and it just uses a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, or it can use a discrete signal for on-off control. So uh, a, a 4 to 20 signal is a modulating an analog signal. Um, so there's, think of it like a, a, a dimmer on a light switch, right? You can go in between on and off. Um, discrete signals are a light switch. It's more like a, you're either on, the valve's opening, or you're off and the valve's closing. There's also a optional Modbus card you can get for the ELO. So if that's something that you are, are needing, uh, it's an extra piece you have to order 
uh, but it is Modbus capable. If you're needing to repair the ELO, we have a couple different videos um, on the ELO valve. We have one that talks about uh, handling the ELO the right way when you're swapping out boards, uh, so that way you don't uh, damage it in any way. We also have one that talks about its operation and different uh, communication types that it uses. Uh, so be sure to check those out. One of the big reasons people will use the ELO valve instead of a pneumatic valve is for emissions and emissions reduction. Uh, this is using electricity to actuate the valve, and so there is no uh, vented gas. So there's no potential for vented gas. Um, with the low-pressure pneumatic control valves, uh, the only options you have to uh, make those emissions free would be to use nitrogen instead of uh, gas. Um, those do not, the products themselves do not vent, um, but that pneumatic signal is vented back through the pilot. So whatever is telling that valve to open and close, uh, that pneumatic signal is vented back through. Um, whether that's a temperature controller, level controller, um, a pilot of some kind. Um, but if you are supplying that pilot with nitrogen, um, that pilot sending that nitrogen to the valve and the valve is, you know, that pneumatic signal is being, signal is being vented back through the pilot. If it's nitrogen, your emissions free. Um, the reason why we don't use compressed air with any of these low pressure pneumatic control valves is because there's only one point of failure between the uh, oxygen, your compressed air, and the um, flow stream. Uh, so if that diaphragm um, or the O-ring, depending on what model you're using, fails, um, you have the potential to mix both oxygen and fuel, and then you are only lacking uh, heat or a spark to have uh, combustion. Um, so in that case, if you are wanting to move towards compressed air uh, to reduce emissions, um, you can, in a, in a burner valve application, which many of these are used in, uh, we suggest going to a high pressure control valve. Uh, you can still get small CVs or small flow rates uh, that fit a wide application, uh, but the valve actuator and the process flow are separated by an open yoke. So even if the diaphragm where that compressed air is being sent to fails, um, that air is being vented to atmosphere and it is not being introduced into the flow stream uh, of the process. So you won't have oxygen and fuel mixing at that point. So that's what a lot of people have, have been doing, um, moving towards um, high pressure control valves, but again, going with the uh, ELO will remove any emissions um, from that application. Uh, that's going to do it for this video on Beyond the Basics. I hope you enjoyed it.